Hi, in this video we'll be looking at 17b rules for differentiation. In the previous video we used the first principle to manually compute the derivatives and in this video a new method will be introduced which will allow you to find the derivatives quickly and accurately. So we have three derivatives here and when the original function is x the derivative function is 1. When the original function is x squared, so that's a um, quadratic function, the derivative function becomes 2x. When the original function is x cubed, so that's a cubic function, the derivative is 3x squared. You might have noticed that finding the derivatives involves having new coefficients and reducing the power. So if the original function was a cubic function, the derivative became a quadratic function. When the original function was quadratic, the derivative became linear. And when the original function was a linear function, the derivative was simply a constant. So there is a general rule uh, which states that when we're finding the derivative of x to the power of n, where n is a positive integer, we bring the power to the front and reduce the power by 1. For example, in the first question, we have f of x is equal to x, and the derivative f dash of x is going to be um, so x can be written as x to the power of 1. If we bring 1 to the front and the power becomes 1 minus 1 and we know 1x to the power of 0 is simply 1. And in the second question, we have f of x is equal to x squared. f dash of x, its derivative, is going to be so you bring the 2 to the front and you reduce the power by 1. So 2 minus 1 is equal to 2x to the power of 1, or simply 2x. Last question, we have f of x is equal to x cubed, and its derivative f dash of x is going to be, so you bring down the 3 to the front, 3x to the power of 3 minus 1, which is 3x squared. So this is really quite simple. The general rule basically says that if you have a function, then to find its derivative, you're going to take the power, bring it to the front, and reduce the power by 1. So previously we used the first principle to manually compute the derivative, but now we know the rule, so we can just use the formula. The original function is f of x is equal to x squared plus 2x, and its derivative function f dash of x is going to be, so we bring the power to the front, it's going to be 2x to the power of 2 minus 1, plus 2 times x, so x can be written as x to the power of 1, and 2x to the power of 1 minus 1. And this can be written as 2x1 uh, plus 2x0, and we know x to the power of 1 is simply x, x to the power of 0 is 1, so the second term becomes 2. As you can see, we have the same answer for the derivative. This function actually has two terms, um, but it doesn't matter because we simply treat each term as a whole and we find their derivatives respectively. So here are some basic rules that we often use. As you can see, if a function is a constant, uh, let's say 3, so if f of x is equal to 3, so c essentially means that it's a constant, then the, uh, the derivative is going to be 0. So whenever you have a constant, the derivative will always be 0. And if the function is a linear function, let's say f of x is equal to 5x plus 8, then its derivative f dash of x is going to be 5 only. Remember we said we simply treat each term as a whole and find their derivatives respectively. In this case, the derivative of 5x is simply 5, and the constant term 8 becomes 0. Um, so the derivative of this function is simply 5. If we have a constant in front of a function, in this case represented by k, and for example, if the original function is 5x squared, we bring down the power, we multiply the power 2 with the coefficient 5. Then we reduce the power by 1, so 2 times 5 is 10, and x to the power of 2 minus 1 becomes 1. So that's why the derivative is 10x. And if it's a sum or a difference, we're going to treat each term as a whole and find their derivatives respectively. So we've talked about this before. And in this example here, if the original function is x squared plus 2x, 
then the derivative is going to be you bring down the power, multiply with the coefficient. In this case, the coefficient in front of x squared is 1. So 2 times 1 equals 2, and the power becomes 2 minus 1, which is 1. So in the second term, the power is 1, and 2 times 1 equals 2, and x to the power of 1 minus 1 equals x to the power of 0, which is 1. So the derivative is 2x plus 2. And similarly with difference, if the original function was x squared minus 2x, the derivative is going to be you bring down the power, multiply it to the coefficient, and you reduce the power by 1. So 2x minus 2. In this question, we want to find the derivative of this function here. So let's define the function first. If I define my function to be f of x is equal to x to the power of 5 minus 2x cubed plus 2, then I can easily find its derivative f dash of x. It's going to be I bring down the 5 and reduce the power by 1, so 5 minus 1, and I bring down the 3 to multiply with the 2, 2 times 3, um, x to the power of 3 minus 1. And remember we said um, if we have a term that's a constant, it becomes 0. And then we have 5x to the power of 4 minus 6x squared. f dash of x is equal to 5x to the power of 4 minus 6x squared. In this question, we are taking one step further. We want to find what's the value uh, when x is equal to 1 for our derivative function. Now, the first step is still to find f dash of x, the derivative function. We know this is the original function. We can find the derivative function f dash of x. This is equal to 3, so we bring down the power to multiply with the coefficient. 3 times 3, x to the power 3 minus 1, minus... 6 times 2, um, x to the power of 2 minus 1, and the constant term becomes 0. We then have f dash of x is equal to 9x squared minus 12x um, to the power of 1, or just 12x. And now that we know what the derivative function is, we can sub in the value x is equal to 1 to evaluate the derivative function. So if I sub in the value x is equal to 1, that means every time when I say x, I'm going to replace it with 1. Okay, so we have 9 times 1 squared minus 12 times 1. And that's going to be 9 minus 12, which is negative 3. But what does negative 3 mean? Well, negative 3 is the gradient of the function at the point where x is equal to 1. All right, so in other words, I have the graph here. It's a cubic function, and negative 3 is the gradient of the tangent line at point x is equal to 1. Okay, so when x is equal to 1, I find the corresponding y value on my graph. So it's going to be here, so this point. Negative 3 is the gradient of the tangent line at this point. So if I were to draw a tangent line here, negative 3 is the gradient of this tangent line. Okay, and this links back to instantaneous rate of change. So we're talking about the gradient at that very moment at the point when x is equal to 1. So that's what negative 3 means here. Now we want to find the gradient of a tangent line. We've talked about this before in 17a in the previous video, so if you haven't seen that one, I'm going to leave the link down below. Um, feel free to check that one out. Since we know the original function f of x, we can easily find out what the derivative function is. It's going to be 3 times 3 equals 9, 9 times x um, squared minus 6 times 2 equals 12, and x to the power of 1, which is simply x. Okay, now we're going to sub in x is equal to 1 because we only need the x value. Remember, so it's the gradient of that tangent line at this very moment when x is equal to 1. So every time when we see x, we're going to replace it with 1. We have 9 times 1 squared minus 12 times 1. And that's going to be 9 minus 12, which is negative 3. So this is the same question, and it just shows you the idea that when finding the gradient of a tangent line at a particular point, you need to find um, the derivative function first, and then by subbing the x value only, 
you can find the tangent, the gradient of the tangent line at that point. So I hope you find this video helpful and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.